Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Community Access. This week, Terry visited with Catherine Ulrich Brakefield. Her book is called Wilted Dandelions. Then we went to the Appendant Village where they had a quilt show. The ladies had close to 300 quilts to show. Then we went to the Leonard to check on the old mill restoration project. Then we have another ribbon cutting in Oxford. And finally, we have another Dog of the Week from the K-9 Rescue League all today in our Community Access. Welcome back. Catherine Ulrich Brakefield is a prominent author in our area. Here is a list of her books. The Benefit, The Dog Next Door, The Wind of Destiny, The Lapeer Area, Unexpected Answers, The Eastern Lapeer County, The Desires of Your Heart, and now her brand new book, Wilted Dandelions. Now is Terry with Catherine Ulrich Brakefield. A couple weeks ago, a very dear lady gave me this book. I went home, sat down and read it, and I read it in a day and a half. And I have that dear lady with me today because I want to talk about her lovely book. This book is called Wilted Dandelions, and I am with Catherine Ulrich Brakefield. She's local. She's from Addison Township. Catherine, I can't thank you enough for giving me this book. I sat down and read it in a day and a half. And I'm not one, it's not fiction. It's not history, it's not a biography, it's a combination of everything. And so I, I don't even know where to start with this. First of all, give us a synopsis of Wilted Dandelions and maybe the purpose that you wrote this book. What a great book. <laughs> oh, you know, it, it's so hard to say. I mean, when, when I first, I always start research first. I mm -hmm. don't know why, but, and I kind of got into Second Great Awakening through my other two books, Lapeer Area mm -hmm. and, um, right. you know, and um, Eastern Lapeer, and then Wind, Wind of Destiny. And so then I started finding out about the Second Great Awakening in 1802, you know, and then, mm -hmm. then, the, um, the, then France ends up uh, deciding to sell all the land west of the Mississippi River to the United States of America in 1804. You know, and that leads mm -hmm. to Lewis and Clark right. that left in 1800 uh, and then came back in 1806, you know. And then the 1830s, after, because they were riding horses back then and spreading the word, you know, right. people really became a fire with the great Second Great Awakening, which brought the missionaries coming out, you know. Hence and the, the, the and hence the dandelions. Right. I started reading about Marcus and Assista Whitman, which inspired me with a new character. Oh, you nice. know, uh -huh. yeah. So you are a historian. There's oh, no I doubt about it. And the history in this book, just the everyday life history, is remarkable. And the fact that you've incorporated the story of missionaries spreading the word of God mm -hmm. throughout the United States, you've done it in, you've painted a picture of what these strong, strong people went through beautifully with your words. Every oh, single you. page, I knew exactly, I was with the characters, I was standing in the room. And it led me on this journey that's a delightful journey. And their challenges were amazing. Uh, I know that last summer you went out west, you and your husband Ed, mm -hmm. took a tour or a trip out west and that was to do the research, right, for what the missionaries went through? Well, I, I first went out, um, oh my gosh, when I was 17. My, my, oh. Yeah, my, my, my sisters and my brother went out. That seed and was that, planted long I ago. I know, and that it? inspired <laughs> that. I thought, how did they do this? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. how did they possibly cover, you know, across the Rocky Mountains? I was afraid to go on it in, in the car, car, let alone right. in a covered wagon. Yeah. But then um, when I started doing more research with my books, that kept coming back to my mind, you know, oh. about this. Uh -huh. So the book was done. I received, the, I received the contract about a year ago, you know, um, uh, end of 2014. Yeah, and then I got it done, 
and I had it refinished, and then I thought, I gotta make sure this is right, because then, 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 mm -hmm. when I, you know, then my characters were real to me, and I wanted to make sure, sure. the trip was real, mm -hmm. so I went out again, you know, oh. and, you know, and I realized too, like with Narcissa, um, um, uh, Rachel and Jonathan Wheaton. Rachel the was willing, yeah, the main character. Right? She was willing to take this man. She mm -hmm. only met twice because she was going. She had a board again experience at the tent revival, and she felt God was sending her out west. You know, mm -hmm. so she, that's where she was going to go, no matter what she had to do to do it. <laughs> so she did. She married she this guy. Married. <laughs> yeah, I thought, oh my goodness. In 1837, correct? 1837. That's where the story begins. Yeah, and it, and she realizes then that God doesn't make coincidences. He just designs possibilities, mm -hmm. you know. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just amazing, you know. And then, of course, when they're real, I had to go out west to make sure everything was right, you know. Right. And then I found out more, you know, I, I kind of tweaked my story a little bit more. Mm. When I, for instance, I lost on the way to South Pass, I, we lost our cell phone power. We are a little bit low on gas. And I thought, oh, my. oh boy, there's nothing out here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they, they went through those passes with wagons and donkeys yeah, even and donkeys right? yeah. and they had to get the right watering holes and see sweet water that was a story about in that in the book I, right. I read yeah it was really bitter water and caused a lot of animals to die so they couldn't drink the water wow. you know and yeah. it was just amazing so they just had their faith in God you know I mean God got them through you know, it was just wonderful. So the adventures in this book, they run into Indians. She mm -hmm. gets kidnapped. Yeah. They, he gets shot, right? Yeah, he, By no, he saves, he, does he, yeah, he may, he, he, got he saves somebody. Yeah, he got, you know, he got sick. Oh, sick. Sick That's from the was. berries. Oh, yeah. right. We won't they tell them too much. <laughs> I know. They rescue a, a, a girl that had been kidnapped. Yes. I, everything they went through. Every single page has an adventure. Yes. And so I, I, I know that you've written other books, and they're interesting. I've read them all. This one has so much fire in it that it has to come from somewhere beyond our own little soul. Yeah. You mentioned these characters were alive. When you went out on that trail last year, mm -hmm. did you hear them talking in your yes, ear? Yes, I did. And telling you this is... I did. The biggest thing I realized was one thing that I met, I saw at, um, I think it was in Casper, Wyoming, and they said, who went, was on the big sign set, you know, and they said, mountain men, explorers, and missionaries, and why was money, adventure, and salvation. Oh, God. And I thought, this is how the, the fire of the Lord the burned motivation. into their heart. Yeah. They wanted to spread the word. They didn't want anyone to be lost. They want everyone to have the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And they were willing to die for their beliefs. And your characters are completely non-judgmental. They accept what they're doing as God's will. Mm -hmm. And they run into characters that are very seedy. And yes. they're still forgiving. And they help them. And they move on with them in, in some instances. And you've written all this in the true sense of history. Mm -hmm. You've got um, Pierre, the yeah. fur trapper, and it's just an amazing book. I, can't, I don't know where I want to start or end. I really, really loved it because I could feel who they were, but I could also feel your passion. And I guess I could say I'm a little bit prejudiced. I know the author, <laughs> and I, I know your, your passion for the subject matter. Um, as far as what these missionaries went through, did you have to do a lot of research in as on missionaries, like how many went out there, how, how many risked their lives to do this, to enlighten other people? I know that they wanted to um, turn Native Americans or at least let, give them the information that the Christian way of life is a, a better life. Mm -hmm. How many people did this? I, I, I can't believe. Not very many. Marcus and Sissa Whitman were the ones, and then they had the spot, the, um, their couple was, a, I think was the call the Spaldings, you know, Spaldings, were the, on the, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that went with them. But honestly, um, the first time they went out, the same thing like, Nar like right, they did uh, it Jonathan. twice, right? Yeah. You know, the real historical facts are Narcissa went twice. Um, Nar well, no, she went once. Marcus went back um, to help a wagon train come back. That was way it. back when. Okay. But wow. the thing is, they died. The, the Indians ended up massacring them. Oh, they did. Yeah, during oh. it, that was uh, this is not in this I book. I didn't you know. know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. they did. I mean, that's what 
spurred me to have people understand the half the time when what these missionaries went out, they never saw their families again, you know. Wow. Yeah. They never saw their families again. They, it was totally a self-denial, you know, mm -hmm. that they would bring the, this, this, this message to these Indians that knew nothing about it. And they had witch doctors, you know. Sure. And so spiritualists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spiritualists. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was really hard, mm -hmm. you know, to come across this and, have, and to show the saving blood of Jesus. It was hard. They had the language barrier, too. Sure. Everything. You know, they had everything against them. Color they only di had their Jesus. cultural difference, their color difference, the language barrier, all the elements. Yeah, of the nature. elements, everything. Going you know, off the sickness. Trail. I mean, at least um, you know Jonathan was a doctor as well as, as oh, that did Marcus help. was a doctor. That helped, but you don't have any medicine. <laughs> right. You right. know, your main character Rachel started out um, leaving a very comfort. Yeah. Laden background. Mm -hmm. And she considered herself an old maid at yes. 21. Yes. How brave. Well, she How was. Brave. Back then, they were marrying at 14. Mm -hmm. You know, and then yeah. her sister was right behind her. She already was engaged for, for over a year. Yeah. So mm -hmm. her father was really worried, you know, this is not good to the, we, you know, to the name, Wanda yeah, right, right, right. name, you know, <laughs> get <laughs> right. going, girl, you know. She's an old maid already. <laughs> and Rachel didn't want to get married. Good for her. Yeah, yeah she um, wanted to live her own life. But she didn't have a choice, so she finally said, okay, I'll marry him, let's get going, you know. <laughs> such a good book, such a good book. I want to talk about the book, but I don't want to give too much no, of it away. No, don't give too much away. But, but I do want to say, at the end, there's so much room for more. Yes. I, you know, in, in my mind, because I was living and breathing with these characters, it was actually a movie to me. I think this book could be a movie and a sequel part because there's so many more places you can go with this. Oh, yeah. I want to I wanna get into the details of that. So you told me um, that book will not be considered for a second yet by your editor, right? Not What's yet. What's the process of um. actually... That happening because I want number two. I want to see the <laughs> second book already. Depends on you, the readers. Okay, yeah, okay. To, to buy books, you know, to Good. encourage people to buy books mm -hmm. and then to put the comments on Amazon or on the Cross River webpage. It's hard to say, but nowadays it's all about, you know, what books sell, you know, and right. that's where it is. You know, that's where it always is. Now, is it, it's on Amazon. Are there Christian websites that this book uh, is Crossrivermedia.com. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Crossrivermedia.com. In fact, if you go to Cross River, um, they will give you a book and they will give you a pin that's, auto, that's got my little, I have one um, uh, verse I love the best was, you know, was this, yeah, is a mustard seed. If you believe it, it have faith as great as a mustard seed, nothing is impossible uh -huh. for you. That's on my pin with my webpage. As well it should be. Yeah, you've, yeah. you've accomplished a lot. <laughs> writing Through the grace of the Lord, yes, I'll tell uh -huh. you. It's all God. I mean, I have to say he's my inspiration, uh -huh. you know. I love but I'll tell you, the more I learn about history, the more I realize how strong our roots are in America. Yeah. We are definitely a nation under God. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt in my mind. Sure. If we separate that, I think America will fall. Mm. We, we, <laughs> it's just impossible. Mm -hmm. Even with the, what I do with the Wind of Destiny, you know, for the Civil War, mm -hmm. this one, mm -hmm. it all shows the, uh, the invincible hand of our Lord Jesus following mm -hmm. us through and guiding us to our infinite wisdom. I mean, it's just wonderful. You know, it couldn't be a better better king than mm. our God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, the agreed. truth of it. Right, oh. agreed. And your message is very clear in this story, which is really um, delightful. It's yes. re it was really nice to read something so exciting, but so soulful and so inspirational. Like I say, I read it in a day and a half, and I don't do that often. That oh. was forsaking dishes and laundry <laughs> and everything else. It was worth it. So go to that website, Crossroads, right? Cross, Cross River. Cross River. Crossrivermedia.com, yes. Right, or Amazon, mm -hmm. Wilted Dandelions. I want to talk so much more about this book. So when you do the second one, the sequel to this, we'll talk about the characters a yeah. little bit more in this one. Also, you have some book signings coming I, I up? I have some book signings. Um, I have one that's going to be at um, in Lake Orion. Where did it go? I, I want to use, I, it's a coffee shop, a Bendigo. Oh, a Bendigo, right. A Bendigo, mm -hmm. I always right. say Bendigo. Right downtown. Right downtown. Right downtown. It kind of looks like that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to look. Next I think to Casa or um, Sagebrush, right? Yes. A Bendigo. Okay. Yep. And it's, um, let's see, that's July 4th. Oh, 
know. No, no, oh. I'm sorry. No, it's not. It's, it's, I know it's, it's Friday, July 3rd. Okay. It's great. July 3rd. Yeah, oh, from 7 to time. 10 p.m. Yep. Everybody will be downtown Lake Orion anyhow, so that's good. Yeah, good. I think that's great. And you will be there as well? I will be there as well. Wonderful. Yeah. And then I'll be at the Starberry Festival. Oh, good. You know, and you know that is the, the July 18th. Yes. And you have to come to that. It's awesome. Oh, it's a great festival anyhow. You, but if you, you have never been there. <laughs> yes, if you've never been there, you've got to go. It yes. is just, it's, it's, it's amazing. Fun. It it's is neat wonderful. It's to see everybody. Everybody there is friends. Oh, yeah. It's really neat to walk down the street and see everybody saying hi to everybody and hugging oh, each other. It's really a fun place. And I tell you, these girls, uh, the, um, the festival committee, they do some awesome they work. Do. All year they yep. work on this festival for one day. You they know? sure do. I yeah. mean, and, and their gratitude is just the smiles they see in everybody's faces. Oh, goodness. They have so much fun that day, too. It's it's like they finally got the wedding put together. I and know. They're just <laughs> enjoying it. Yeah, and that's July 18th, and you'll be downtown yes, then. I'll be downtown then from about one, you know, noonish, one to three. Okay. You know, yep. I'll right. have my books there autographed ready for you. Now, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, do you have a, a website or email that they can contact you yeah, it's and tell you how great their, the book is? Oh, yeah. It would be great. Um, it's right, my last name, Catherine Alch Breakfield. Okay. You know, dot we'll com. Put that at the bottom yes. of the screen. And okay. then um, also there are some, some things in the back of the book that Cross River asked people to do, you know. Great. On Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. you know, Pine right. West to get the word out. Okay. Actually, you're right. I think everyone can, can benefit by reading this mm -hmm. book. Right. I mean... What one of us has never had something, a dream, or someone they, they couldn't really, um, you know, benefit from me. She, mm -hmm. she tried to make her father happy, but she couldn't. Right. Because what he wanted, she didn't want. Right. And it but turned you know, out well for It her. turned out well for both mm -hmm. of them, yeah. yeah. Oh, know? and there's adventure, like I said. There's adventure, there's spirituality, there's just learning how to love somebody. Yes. There's so much in this book. There's so many aspects. I, I can't say enough about it, and I think everybody would be interested in reading it. I, and thank you so much for giving it to me. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank, I'm just so glad you liked it. That's, oh, my, that's my best reward. Oh, or I my loved readers. It. Yep. And, and I want to get the word it. out. So everybody go on Amazon.com and look for Wilted Dandelions or Catherine Aldrich Breakfield. You can just look up her name and you can find the book and the other books that she's written as well. And Catherine, thank you for joining us here today. Oh, it was a pleasure. It was. Thank it's you so much for inviting you. Oh, I know it is. You're great to be with. <laughs> Back to you, Bill. We're going to chat some more. Wow, what a great story. Next up, Miracle Quilts. They had a great show at Independence Village. By the way, Miracle Quilts was founded by Carol Carroll in 2009. The volunteers meet the second Saturday of every month at Independence Village. Their mission is to create patriotic quilts to present to our wounded troops at Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, D.C. For our Michigan VA hospitals and for our homeless vets and for our troops currently serving in our great country. Now here is Carol Carroll. My name is Carol Carroll. I'm the founder of Miracle Quilts. We're here at uh, Independence Village in Oxford, Michigan, and we have our annual showcase display of quilts. We make quilts for our wounded troops, and this year we have over 350 quilts on display. We also have a craft show uh, and a garage sale, and all proceeds from the, these sales will go towards purchasing new materials to create new quilts. Our project was founded in March of 2009, and it's in honor of Joseph, Private First Class Joseph Miracle of Ortonville. Joseph was serving our country in Afghanistan, and he was killed in action. He was only 22 years of age, and this project is to commemorate his service and sacrifice to our country. Uh, what's nice about our group is when people come to sew, they can come and sew here, they can sew at home. The quilts can be any size, shape, or color. They can be any theme. 
whatever a sower chooses to do. We also make quilts for the VFW National Home for Children. It's located in Eaton Rapids, and it's the only military home for children of the military that are there due to some severe circumstances. And we make hats and gloves and scarves and also quilts, and they will be delivered up there in the month of August. Um, we, would enjoy, we would like people to join us. Um, they can contact me at MiracleQuilts at att.net or they can call me at 248-321-8669. They can also read about us. We're in the Oakland Press at least once a month and just telling people what we're up to and maybe where we're meeting, where we're going. Um, if people choose to donate, uh, we take gift cards to Joann's, we take fabric, uh, people make quilts. We're in need right now for postage money. We are shipping large size quilts over to Afghanistan to an intensive care unit and they will be placed on our troops, injured troops, as they're put on a transport plane being shipped home. So we welcome the support, and again, if you have any questions, please feel free to call me. Thank you. Good job, Carol. Next up. We went to Leonard to check on the Old Mill Restoration Project. Hello, everyone. Um, today, I welcome uh, Oakland, or I'm sorry, Oxford Community Television to Leonard. To, uh, we're working on uh, the Old Mill Project, as we refer to it. We're trying to save the elevator, and today we're doing some cleanup. Uh, Bruce Pearson and I have been working together on this project, trying to save a little history for the community. Um, so we've got volunteers, and um, we're working probably till around noon, and we hope to clean up most of the beanery building, which is the part of the structure that had collapsed initially, and then um, we'll uh, start looking at repairs on the rest of the elevator structure. Bruce, would you care to comment? Well, as you know, in Addison Township, we have uh, some of the finest history in all of Oakland County here. You know, we have the... Um we have the uh, oldest uh, mercantile building, 1851. We have the oldest one-room schoolhouse, 1856, which we restored. Um, all of these buildings, and we have the, the mill in Lakeville is 1830. And this mill here, once again, is another historical site. We have one of the, the most historical uh, cemeteries in Oakland County. We have a Revolutionary War veteran buried here. So I'm into the history. I love the history. And so we're here partnering with uh, Leonard here to help put another... Uh, a little clog in the wheel here of history for uh, Addison Township and Leonard and we're all one together. So we're going to uh, do this and we'd like to thank um, uh, Oakland County, Brooks Patterson. He's been very uh, helpful in this. Uh, he sent over his uh, people, Ron Campbell and Jim Keglovich from the uh, county and they're up Kristen, here okay. and Kristen and everybody is helping us in Oakland County. This is a gem even recognized by Oakland County. And so we're doing our part, and with their help, I think we can get this done. And uh, we're hoping that when people see it, they'll all realize that it was worthwhile when it's all finished, and we'll make it a gem connected to the Pollyann Trail. So that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Next up, we had another great ribbon cutting. This one is for the Valor Saloon. Hi everyone, I'm Debbie Uren, President of the Oxford Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here today for the grand opening and the ribbon cutting of Valor Salon located on East Burdick Street. 
we have the owners and as you can see many of their hairstylists that are here today I'm going to turn the mic over to uh, Josh and Amanda and they will tell you a little bit about the salon Amanda, Amanda tell us what <laughs> Amanda, tell us all of the products that you have here and what services uh, that you provide with all of your hairstylists, okay? And where were you today? You were at, you here you were doing so many hair hairstyles for a wedding down in Detroit. Yeah. So you're a very busy gal and you've got very busy girls here. So tell us a little bit about the business, okay? Okay. I'm Amanda McFarland. This is my husband, Josh. We own Valor Salon. We're located at 26 Burdick Street here in Oxford. Um, it's been my dream come true to own a salon in Oxford, own a salon at all, but then to be in Oxford where I grew up is even better. Um, we offer hair services. We're hoping to also offer waxing, full body waxing in the near, very near future as long with spray tan. Um, I totally lost. Uh, obviously color correction, uh, <laughs> hair cutting, extensions. Wedding. Cool. Also <laughs> weddings on site and off and makeup, and makeup services as well. Yep. Okay, this is Lacey. She's the manager. Um, Ashley, Emily, Haley, Peyton, both receptionists. This is um, my mom, Kaylee. She's the apprentice at the salon. Mary, Charlene, the receptionist, and Grace. Yeah, excellent. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much. Well, look who we have here. And who is this little one? This is my youngest daughter, Charlize. <laughs> She'll be three in January. Well, that's perfect timing. How would we like to do our ribbon cutting now? And we can have her help along with holding the scissors. How does that sound? I have some jealous ones. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? Let's do it. All right. Our ribbon cutting officially. The salon is open. There we go. Yeah. Yay! Yay. Yay! Congratulations. Congratulations. We wish you all the best in the world with your new <laughs> with your new business and everybody is happy and we're happy for you. All right? The Valor Salon is located at 26 East Burdick Street. Now, it's time for another great dog at the Canine Rescue League. Canine Stray Rescue is Oxford's own local dog rescue. Each year they take in hundreds of dogs and bring them into suitable homes. A certified nonprofit organization, Canine Dog Rescue strives to give pound dogs a new leash on life. To donate, adopt, or even volunteer, call them at 248 628-0435 or go to their website dogsaver.org and click on the K9 Stray Rescue League link. Hi, I'm Lori Stevenson and we're here today at K9 Stray Rescue League in Oxford with Penny. She is a young adult husky mix, probably just under two years old. Um, she came out of a house with other dogs. She's wonderful with other dogs. She's really scared here, so you'll have to excuse her. She's kind of shy. Once you take her for a walk and get her out away from here, she opens up and becomes your very best friend. Um, she got spay on Tuesday, and she's up to date on all her vaccines and heartworm tested, and she's ready to slot into a new home. Um, if you'd like to see Penny and, and meet her, or if you have any other animals at home, bring your animals out for a meet and greet, and come on out and meet Penny. Um, we're located at 2120 Metamora Road in Oxford. Our phone number is 248-628-0435. And you can read more about Penny on PetFinder.com by looking up K9 Stray Rescue League or by going to www.dogsaver.org slash K9 Stray, the letter K, the number 9, S-R-L. Just another great dog from the Kidney Rescue League. By the way, they are located at 2120 Menomore Road, just a mile north of Myers. Well, that's all the time for this week. We hope you enjoyed our program. So, for our reporter Terry Styles and our editor Talon Rodell, I'm Bill Service, and you have a great, great week. <laughs>